Yes, it is that time of year again. Cold, snow and ice. As the Earth's surface cools down, so does the life that is dependent on it. Over the course of millions of years, ants have developed a fascinating mechanism to not only survive, but also calm and regenerate during winter. This ability is called hibernation and every ant species that lives in an environment that gets cold during a certain time of year has adapted to it. For us, ant keepers, this means that we get a break from our native ants for a while. But before I take my break, I might as well show you all my ant colonies that are currently hibernating. This might even include the one or the other ant colony that I have not shown you yet. Welcome to the Antsvena Ant Channel and enjoy our winter 2022 ant room tour. Okay, quick disclaimer, before I start cycling through all my ant colonies, I need to mention that most European ant species do need to hibernate between October and March at 8 to 12 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the footage you see was of course taken a few weeks ago. And second, get yourself comfortable because this is going to be a long video. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. And the first pet ant colony we'll visit is the one I get asked most about, Lazius Niger. While this colony has a long history, I'll make it as short as possible since we have a lot of colonies to cover today. So my four year old Lazius Niger colony almost died out after their second year during my absence. That being said, the queen managed to grow the few larvae that had survived and the colony made its recovery in the third year. Ever since I moved them in their current setup, my all-in-one DIY sand and farm, they have happily been digging tunnels and multiplying in them. The workers mostly like to stay hidden underground unless they smell food. In that case, they swarm it. So, I have high hopes for them in 2023. Another lazy species that I've grown to like a lot during the last year are my Lazius emarginatus. Originally in a test tube, they outgrew it fast. So, I moved them into another self-made formicarium of mine. The Udong all-in-one with an outward for the ants to forage attached on top of it. Now, to be honest, the nesting area offered by this setup was way too big for them at the time they moved in with 30 workers. But they grew exceptionally well during this past year and if I had to guess their population is almost double now sitting at 55 to 60 workers. I do think this setup will suffice them for the year 2023 but I'll definitely have to make something new bigger for them in 2024. Our final Lazius colony is one that you should all be familiar with. They started as an experiment but are now a fully fledged polygynous Lazius flavus colony with an abundance of queens. I don't want to get into too much detail on them since we'll be monitoring their development in separate videos as the experiment goes on. What you don't know however is this. I also started a second Lazius Flavus colony in parallel with the official ant experiment. This Lazius Flavus colony consists of quote only five queens since I had the feeling I needed one more polygynous ant colony as a control for cross-checking with the main experiment. 
Ok, now we're done with the lazio species, but they were only the tip of the iceberg. Before I go into my formica colonies. If you enjoy this video and want to see more content from me, make sure you squeeze that like button as hard as you can. This helps the channel out a lot with the algorithm and helps get new people into this great hobby of ant keeping. Now jumping to our formica colonies. I've already made a dedicated video to this, but let me briefly mention that I did release the remaining Formica Fusca workers after their queen died, since I couldn't find another Formica Fusca queen in the following end season. Another more delicate story are my Formica Cunicularia ants. This colony was the deciding factor for me starting this channel and documented my ant keeping journey alongside them. For reasons unknown to me, these workers either killed their original queen or the queen died without me noticing. However, what I do know is that they dismantled her afterwards, since when I checked on them one day, I saw the workers carrying pieces of her across their formicarium. Speaking of their all-in-one ant farm, it didn't age as well as I had hoped for, mainly due to the plaster nest core being too water spongy and the ants opening passages wherever they saw fit. Not that this is a bad thing, but if you are considering to keep formica ants in a plaster nest, know that they can chew through it. Anyway, there was no way I was going to give up on this particular colony this easy. So, I went out and searched and found two more Formica Cunicularia Quinans this season and I was prepared to try it. Queen Adoption I fed both the new queen and the now queenless colony. Afterwards, I put them in the refrigerator for two days. This apparently helps get rid of the pheromone scent a colony has or at least weakens it and should help integrating the new queen into the existing colony. Well, it did not work. So, the day after I let that queen in their formicarium, I found this one dead too. At this point, I had to make a decision. Either try one more time with the second of the new queens or give the other queen, the 2022 Formica Cunicularia Queenant, a chance at establishing its own colony. The decision was hard, but I chose the second route. So I will be releasing the workers of my original colony in the wild after this winter. The good news is that the new queen managed to grow a whopping 15 nanitics, which gives me hope for next year. Last entry in the Formica genus is the colony I recently found in my flower pot. Here I asked you about your help in identification and boy was I overwhelmed with your help in the comments. So I want to thank you all for commenting. According to most of you, they can be narrowed down to two probable species, either Formica lemani or Cinerea. Either works fine for me since I love Formica ants in general. What I want for this colony is a larger setup that gives them the ability to dig their own tunnels since this is what they used to do in their flower pot. I merely tossed them in this setup because this was the only one that I had available one day before my trip to Greece. Ok, I hope you guys like longer videos because this one has still way to go. Now, speaking of Greece. What shall I say, from the unique landscapes, its heartwarming people and the tasty food, I can't even decide what I like the most. Fact is, I am Ernst Vienna, 
So, I always have an eye open for ants. And sure enough, I found two Campanotus queens in Greece. I am not sure about their species though. Originally, I thought they were Campanotus ethiops, but many of you said I should definitely check out if they are Campanotus laconicus or Ionius instead. Since the online documentation of Greek species is somewhat lacking, I can't say for sure what species they are. Despite the fact that both queens had wings when I caught them, both were fertile. One raised a single worker while the other raised five nanitics. This is a perfect example that not all queens are born equal. Remember, they were both caught at the same place, the same night, and were kept in the completely identical conditions. Even so, one raised four more workers than the other. Anyway, I am keeping both for now, and I hope things get interesting after hibernation. Before I continue with other Campanotus, I have to cover another Greek colony, my Colobopsis truncata. This is a rather shy species. I found the queen back in May this year, and it took her a few months to get her first worker, but now she has two and some larvae. Let's see what the next ant season brings for this colony. A colony I truly like are my Campanotus vagus. Sure, they are not as big as Ligniperda, but boy do they grow fast in comparison. I probably rushed their move into the wooden ant farm I made. It was also admittedly way too big for them. This resulted in a few casualties. During last hibernation, they went down from 11 to only 5 workers. Thus, I decided to move them back into a test tube. And that did wonders for them. Now, our Campanotus vagus ant colony has 9 worker ants again. Next year, I'll give them the option to move into one of the wooden ant nests Foranto sent me. If you also like wooden ant nests for your ants, feel free to check out their site and use the code ANTSVIENNA for a 10% discount on your checkout. I, for one, crave their new nests with a watering system. Now to the rather unspectacular story of my Campanotus Ligniperda colony. I don't know even where to start here. It took the queen forever to develop some workers and the mistake of me to move them into a larger setup too soon didn't help the situation either. After I moved them into this white onk creation of mine, the workers started dying one by one and I can't even tell why. So, when there were only two workers left from seven, I moved them back into a fresh test tube, only to watch the last two workers die a few days later. I don't know what went so wrong in the Campanotus Ligniperda case, but the queen is now alone. I will try to feed her as much protein and sugars as possible, but honestly, I don't have high expectations or hopes for her. On the bright side, a colony that I do have hope in now, again, are my Campanotus phallax. I caught this queen back in 2020, if I remember correctly. For some reason, it took her two years of trial and error, but finally she has raised five nanitics. I do hope that things will go smoothly for this colony in the upcoming year and will of course be making an ant guide and documenting their progress on the channel. Making an ant farm for them will also be part of it, so make sure to subscribe if you're one of those people that love making DIY nests for their ants. 
Now, moving from the rather large Campanotus to a much smaller ant species, specifically to our Tetramorium caespitum imporum ants. While this queen had been developing nice and growing quite a few workers, around 20, bad luck struck and their test tube flooded. I also posted this on Instagram, thinking that this was it for them. However, many of you told me to clean out the water and let the ants dry for a couple of days. And so I did. Three days later, I could not believe my eyes, guys. The queen and half of the workers were back on their feet. What a miracle! How did I not think of drying them sooner? Thank you to everyone commenting under my post that day. So, if things go upwards again, I will also create a DIY formicarium for this ant colony. Another small colony I've been keeping for a while now, I think since September 2020, if memory serves me correct, were my Solenopsis fugax. These ants are so tiny, I have problems seeing them. Talk about filming. Fact is that the queen has finally managed to grow around 6 nanitics. After this long wait, and I am reluctantly considering to attach an outworld to their test tube or give them a moving option. Do you keep Solenopsis fugax? What setup worked best for you? I need some tips from you guys here. Now we're almost 17 minutes into this video and a few long-time subscribers may ask what happened to my exotic ants. Traditionally, I make an update video about my Campanotus nicobarensis every year in January, but now We've also got the newly received Campanotus maculatus colony to consider. So, I need you guys and girls to help me clear my dilemma. What video do you want to see first? Nicobarensis or maculatus? Comment below. Both of these exotic ant colonies need some love and they will be getting it now since all other colonies are hibernating, which means more time for exotics. If you are still here, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned with Ants Vienna for 2023. Merry Christmas everyone!